Welcome to another video from rcdiy.ca. This video covers setting up the FRSky S6R and S8R receivers. Please read the documentation for details and updates on what I will be showing you. A link to the documentation will be placed in the description below this video. These receivers are capable of doing knife edge and hover modes of flight, but this video will only cover level and stabilized flight modes. Painless 360 may be covering the other flight modes and there may be links to those videos in the description below this video. In this video, we will go over what the different colored LEDs indicate, programming the transmitter, binding the receiver to the transmitter, selecting and flashing the firmware, receiver calibration, configuring the receiver, performing a receiver self-check, correcting servo directions, preparing for the first flight, and finally, we will revisit transmitter and receiver configurations. The first time you set up and use the S6R or S8R receiver, follow these steps exactly as shown in the documentation linked below this video. The main reason for problems is missing a step or misunderstanding a step. Do not install the receiver in a model until you have been through the setup at least once on the bench. Another possible reason for problems is a faulty receiver. The first time you set up and use the S and S6R or S8R receiver, have a spare one on hand as a backup. These receivers can be configured to operate as simple X6R or X8R receivers. If for some reason you no longer wish to use the gyro features, they can be turned off. So these receivers are unlikely to go to waste. Quick mode is also referred to as convenient mode and simple mode. Quick, convenient and simple are all different names for the same mode. In this mode, a single channel, channel 10, switches between level, stabilize and gyro off flight modes. In the original firmware and when the current firmware is in non-quick mode, two channels, channels 10 and 11, are used to switch between level, stabilize, knife edge, hover, and gyro off flight modes. There are two additional LEDs on these receivers. The yellow LED comes on during calibration only when the receiver is being written to. When the receiver is powered on, quick and brief flashing of the blue LED indicates that the receiver is operating in quick mode. When the receiver self-check is initiated, the blue LED comes on and stays on till the control services stop moving. As soon as the blue LED turns off, we move the sticks to their limits. To start, program the transmitter with a new model as shown. Note that the channel order required is AETR. For channels 1 through 4, use straight input to output mixer mapping. Do not add any mixes for flying wings or retails. The receiver does the mixes for these. I suggest ignoring channel 5 and using a Y cable for ailerons. Also ignore channel 6 if you are using a single servo. Channel 9 controls the stabilized mode gain. This can be adjusted in flight. It is important to note that when the knob is centered, the gain gets set to zero and no stabilization will occur in stabilized mode. I like putting this knob on a curve so that when it is all the way counterclockwise, the gain is zero, zero, and when it is all the way clockwise, the gain is maximum. When it is centered, the gain is at half. Channel 10 gets put on a three position switch. In this video, we are covering the quick mode, so channel 11 will be ignored. Channel 12 first gets put on a three position switch. This is so that self-check can be initiated using it. We will be covering self-check later on in this video. 
after the self check is done and before first flight, remember to put channel 12 on a momentary switch. Once the channel has been programmed, set the RF mode to D16. Set the channel range to 1 through 16. When setting the failsafe, consider which flight modes you want the receiver to be in off, stabilize, or auto level. Bind the receiver to the transmitter. If you are using OpenTX 2.2, you may or may not have the bind options depending on what you selected as the firmware build options. OpenTX 2.2.1 and later have the bind options always showing up. Select channels 1 through 8 with telemetry on. To learn more about bind option, follow the link in the description below this video. This video was made using firmware 170706 from the Air Force Sky website. Flash the receiver with this firmware or a later one that has the quick mode. A link to the S-Port firmware flashing guide will be placed in the description below this video. The firmware defaults to quick mode in which the blue LED flashes quickly and briefly on powering up the receiver. In quick mode, channel 10 controls the three available flight modes. Using a three position switch on channel 10, auto level is initiated with the switch up and away from the pilot. The switch centered initiates the stabilized mode and the switch down and towards the pilot turns off the gyro. If you choose not to use the quick mode, then you will need to memorize the five combinations for two switches, one for channel 10 and another for channel 11. These five combinations are for gyro off, hover, stabilize, level, and knife edge flight modes. The receiver may be calibrated using the PC configuration software or the Lua script. In this video, we are using the Lua script. The Lua script is obtained by downloading the SD card contents using Companion. A link to downloading the SD card contents guide will be placed in the description below this video. This script is in the SXR folder and is called SXR underscore calibrate dot Lua. Turn on the transmitter and then the receiver. Check that they are connected. The green LED will be on. Using the SD card, launch the lower script from the transmitter. Follow the instructions on the screen. The instructions will guide you placing the receiver on each of its six sides. You will need a small block of wood or a table edge to rest the receiver in a couple of the orientations. The receiver needs to be kept still while the yellow LED blinks for about five seconds. When the receiver is placed, face down, the yellow LED can't be seen. In this case, count to 10 after pressing enter. The receiver calibration only needs to be done once when you first use the receiver. To configure the receiver, use the script called sxr.lua. On page 1 of the script, set the wing type, which is normal for this video. Set the mounting type, which is horizontal, with the pins towards the tail and label facing up for this video. On page 2 of the script is where we configure the server directions and a number of other settings which will be ignored for now. Self-check is a process that determines what level is for the gyro and the server throw limits to prevent binding. This is usually done once per model but may be repeated if the throws are too large or too small. You may also want to repeat the self-check if the aircraft does not fly level 
and you suspect it may be due to the gyro's level calibration. With the propeller removed, keep the model level and stationary. The throttle stick is kept held down and the rest centered. The channel 10 and 11 switches may be in any position. Turn on the transmitter and then the receiver. If the blue LED flashes, wait for it to stop. Press the FS button to enter the self-check process. Or, if you have a three-position switch on channel 12, move it in and out of the center position three times within three seconds. The blue LED turns on and the servos move. Wait till the servos stop moving and the blue LED turns off. Immediately move the elevator, aileron, and rudder sticks to their limits. If you have a switch on any of the channels from 5 through 8, move them to their limits as well. For example, you may have a switch controlling the model's lights or landing gear. Moving the throttle up a little bit ends the self-check process. To verify that the self-check process was completed properly, turn off the receiver and then turn it on again. Place the receiver in auto level mode. In quick mode, this is done by moving the channel 10 switch up and away from the pilot. Raise and lower the tail and then do the same to one of the wings. The elevator and ailerons will move. If they don't move or don't move enough, then you probably have to repeat the self-check procedure. To test the receiver servo directions, place the receiver in auto level mode. In quick mode, this is done by moving the channel 10 switch up and away from the pilot. Raise the tail up and the elevator should also go up in proportion to how much the tail was raised. Raise the left wing up and the aileron should also go up in proportion to how much the wing was raised. Jerk the tail right or nose left. The rudder should go right. Visualize a hand opposing the action. To correct the direction, Launch the SXR Lua script and then go to page two. Scroll down to the relevant control surface and press enter and then scroll to change its direction. Then press exit. Repeat the servo direction test. To test the transmitter servo directions, hold the transmitter over the aircraft. Move the elevator stick down and the elevator on the model should move up to meet it. Move the aileron stick left and the left aileron should move up to meet it. Move the aileron stick right and the right aileron should move up to meet it. Move the rudder stick left and the rudder moves left to meet it. This is like doing a high five where the two hands and their fingers meet up. To correct the directions, go to the outputs screen and then edit the channel directions. For the first flight, pick a calm day if possible. If channel 12 was on a three position switch, change it to a two position momentary switch. We do not want self-check to be initiated by mistake during flight. Practice placing the receiver gyro in the different modes, level, stabilize, and off. Set the gain knob at 50%, 
which is the center position of the knob. Check the servo directions again before takeoff. Do a range test. Take off with the gyro turned off. Gain some altitude. Switch the gyro to stabilize mode. If the model goes into a roll, the aileron servo direction are probably reversed. If the model goes into a climb or dive, the elevator servo directions are probably reversed. If the model goes into a turn, the rudder servo directions are probably reversed. Land the plane and correct the servo directions on the receiver using the Lua script. While in stabilized mode, test different gain settings. If the model oscillates back and forth, the gain may be too high. Turn it down in flight. Switch the gyro to level mode. Bank or pitch the model and then center the stick. The model should return to level flight. Repeat the test with the plane being placed in various orientations before centering the sticks. If you have problems with the level mode, do not test the recover mode. This is because the recover mode is a form of quick acting level mode. If the level mode works, test the recover mode. Switch the gyro to stabilize or off mode. Bank or pitch the model and then activate the recover mode switch. The model should return to level flight. Repeat the test with the plane being placed in various orientations before activating the recover mode switch. After the first flight, consider if you want to change the channel line to a fixed value instead of using the knob. This way, we don't have to remember the knob's position when we fly. If the plane was not flying level, adjusting the aileron and elevator auto level offset may help. To do this, use the sxr.lua script. Experiment with different settings. Redoing the self-check with the model in a different level orientation may also help. This brings us to the end of this video. Once again, a reminder that in the description below this video, there is a link to the documentation with updates. Please like, subscribe, and follow the links below. Stay safe and have fun.